other students uh, on the way. We're going to start because we don't want you to wait too much since you're, you know, you were here on time. Uh, my name is Ibequis Montalvo. I'm the Heads Executive Director. Thank you for joining today, joining us today. And uh, we're going to, as you see in the agenda, we're going to have a welcoming remarks, uh, remarks from John Jay. And to do so, we have Will. Will I switch. <laughs> Simpkins. Simpkins is very uh, good to get it in, in here from the Office of Car Career. Mm -hmm. Career, uh, Career. Career Professional Development. Pro and professional Development. So he will do in a uh, welcome to all of you as a, represent, a represent, uh, representative of John Day, our host today. So go ahead. Thank you. Hi. Um, like she said, I'm Will Simpkins. I'm the director of the Career Center here at John Jay. Um, we are a proud member of HETS, so thank you for being with us. Of course. Uh, looking forward to the increasing the partnership. I just wanted to tell you a couple things about John Jay. Um, some of you I know are John Jay students, so thanks for being here this morning. Um, John Jay is a federally designated Hispanic-serving institution. 48% of our students are Hispanic Latino. We're very proud of that. Um, and the work that we do at John Jay is not to um, replicate what other colleges are doing across the country, but to really think about, given the unique student population that we work with, how can we do the work differently um, to better meet our students' needs, to connect our students to the employers, particularly for the Career Center, um, that are going to, to offer them the opportunity to really shine and be leaders in our field. And that's what we do every day at John Jay, so we're really pleased um, that you're here participating in this webinar. Um, you, yes. And uh, I would encourage you, if you're not a John Jay student, um, to, to look at our programs, look at our graduate programs. Uh, if you're here in the city in an undergraduate school, if you're in one of our community colleges, uh, if you're in the CUNY system, we would invite you also to think about transferring here for a four-year degree. Um, and we can, just three words to look up, the CUNY Justice Academy. Um, something to Google. It's an easy way to transfer into John Jay. So thank you for being here. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. And enjoy your day. And yeah, the L2 thing confuses everybody. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you that there is one uh, lady in Brown. She's from BNCC. Oh. Right now, but she's taking criminal justice, right? And mm -hmm. she's planning to come so here. So we'll see you in a year or two. Yeah, okay. so you have one. Sounds good. Uh, one. So Sounds you good. know already Will, so he can help you in, in any time, OK? But thank you, Will, for your for your time. And see you later. And you can, uh, welcome to join us. Okay, so now we are on, the t on time for the agenda, and let me, as you may see in the agenda, when you register, we, our main speaker today is going to be Minwe Yoshida, 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 okay, sorry, it's She's a, pro a multicultural professional coach, and, and she was born and raised in Mexico City, and although she's, you're going to do it in English. No, she fully understands the impact of global markets and the importance of reinforcing the stream mm -hmm. within a multicultural environment. As her mother is Mexican and her, fa uh, and her father is Japanese, so uh, what, what a mix. <laughs> she works closely with diverse groups focused on diversity and inclu inclusion and was of char in charge of training and development for the multicultural markets of New York Life. Uh, she, was work, uh, she has worked with some of the top financial institutions in the USA and Fortune 100 global companies in Latin America, including Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, and Puerto Rico. Great. So uh, please welcome uh, Minue today, so she can uh, uh, be to today giving her interesting topic, talking about uh, excuse me. How to how your multicultural background will help you succeed as a student and also as a professional. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? I got closer to you since you decided to sit in this side, but thank you for not scattering around. Because sometimes it's hard to be yelling all over. So I'm going to try to be next to you and close to you. Uh, thank you so much for being here this morning. It's such a pleasure, and um, I also feel part of something bigger. So thank you for letting me be part of this, right? Thank you. And what we're doing today is planting a seed. Before we start, very quickly, um, housekeeping rules. Phones on mute. 
Yes. You know that part? <laughs> um, you can take pictures of anything that I will present. Um, but um, I have a very strange accent, so don't rely on that. If I say a word that doesn't exist, raise your hand and say, <laughs> you're just making that up, please, that's not a word, okay? We have a good deal? Because no. of course English is not my first language, so I'm going to start with that one. That happened to me too. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there, you know? That's it. You know, um, as you already heard, multiculturalism is something that I was born with. Um, I was born in Mexico City with a Japanese father, so I grew up taking my shoes off and thinking that everybody would do the same thing at their households. And then, of course, I have the typical questions when Karate Kid came. Uh, <laughs> Did you also catch flies with your chopsticks? Huh? In the beginning, I was like, what? And then it's, oh, sure, every time. That's exactly how we do it. <laughs> so I grew up with black beans, white rice, right? And I did not know uh, what this would do, what this, what past, this past would do in my future. So I was a bit shy and retracted and quiet. Yes, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. I know you can't tell now. But then what happened? Life puts you there. Regardless of what your personality is, regardless of what skills you have, Regardless of how much you think you know, or how much you are, or how much, it doesn't matter. Life will put you there. And when the time comes, you would rise and shine and do it, because there's no choice. And you know, you need to go to Brazil, but you need to speak Portuguese. What? It's just that moment when you say, okay, you have no idea how you're going to do it. But you said, okay. Then you figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. This multiculturalism is coming somewhere. And I didn't know the importance of it until I lived the opposite. What happens when people do not have any background of being multicultural, when they have no idea what happens in the companies, what happens in society, what happens in the world? Well, a few bad things could happen. What do you see here? <laughs> we have an issue of, of, of lack of culture and disability, right? Yes. Okay. Any Spanish speaking people here? Raise your hand proudly. Never, like, when you hear, like, where are you from type of thing, you raise it proudly and high. Any Spanish speaking people here? There you go, that's a difference. Yeah. Please, can you tell me what that is? <laughs> a bad translated sign. <laughs> Very bad. What is éxito? Success. 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 Unless, here's my theory, that that line was for recruiting purposes. <laughs> that's my theory. Otherwise, yeah, really, no. you can pay somebody to do this, right? Um, and then how about this one? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, another example of lack of multiculturalism, right? It's like, come on, you can just ask. <laughs> um, we see this often, right? The other day I was flying um, in Delta, they had food area, and in Spanish, área de restauración, which means mm, restoration, like when you're fixing something. <laughs> and maybe I did it as a joke, I don't know. And this is a very typical situation, right? So, what am I going to do? Do I bow? Do I do? And the Japanese people giving you the card with the two hands, you're supposed to read it, take it, uh, put it in your pocket, before taking the other one and changing it with two hands as well, as you're looking in the eyes. And then the concept of space, right? <laughs> we have a different concept of space, depending on where you are. That's a fact. So what happens when they are not properly adapted? Well, there's a lot of misunderstandings. There's, there's a lot of opportunities that are missed. That's what I want to emphasize here today. 
if you open yourself to the different multicultural environments that you're going through and you let it also perm you, you will not have missing opportunities, there won't be accidents. Relationships, productivity and at the end happiness. Bro of course, and it's broken relationships as friends, uh, with co-workers, you know, um, with family members, or acquaintances, you know, somebody you just met. Yeah, I was married with a Catalan guy, oh my God. a lot of people, <laughs> I'm not married anymore, so definitely one of the things is the cultures are really, really different. Really different. Yeah, the really, way, different. the way they speak is sort of different, you know, the way they argue, sort of different. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, because here's the question that I have for you guys today. Why is it that we're always fighting? Why is it that we have misunderstandings? What, what do we want? What do people want? Why do we fight? Ideas. We want to be understood, but we don't know how to express it. You want to be understood? Yes, that's part of it. And what could be stronger than that? Unity. What is it? I said unity, for the most part. Like we you fight want to be unity. on one playing field, but when you have people from different cultures, it's not going to always be mm -hmm. one unified mm -hmm. understanding of how things are supposed to run. What is the one thing that we are fighting for? To be accepted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More than accepted, it's deeper, but it comes from there. I'd say equal access to opportunities and things that we need, like housing, food, the basics, because not everyone can't get the same thing on the same playing field. And that is part of it. Mm -hmm. And that is part of it. At the end, there's one underlying wanting of people. There's something that people want, we as humans. More than power, more than money, we want to be right. Um. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if we fight with other people, it's because we want to be right. And the other one to My it. culture is better, your culture, my religion is better, my food is better, my habits are better, my thinking is better. That's the problem. So, in order to continue with today's session, I want everybody to please say out loud, I am wrong. Could you all say it, please? I am wrong. <laughs> Thank you. I am wrong. Because if you are all thinking, I am right, nothing that will come to you will be understood, will be absorbed. Because if not, everything that I present, you will go like, no, 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 that's not right. Think about this. Every time you're in a class, every time you're in a school, speaker, Every time you're in a presentation, every time you meet somebody at the subway, just assume you're wrong to give you the opportunity to really be open, to really understand, to really listen, to really create unity. Instead of fighting. Because at the end of the day, guess what? Two truths can live together, right? The coin is flipping. And it has two faces. It's the same coin. It's the same point. What's in a culture? There's many things that create culture. The most typical one or the most uh, tangible one could be where are we coming from, right? So let's take a quick survey here. Where are you from? Now, you don't have to respond. Uh, if there's any HR <laughs> people that would typically have like, no, no, I'm not asking. So you can uh, not say it if you don't want to, but if you want to, then this will be really fun. Where are you from? And I'll start with me, and then you guys will tell me if you want to. I'm from Mexico City. I was born there. A month ago, I became citizen of the United States of America. Thank you. I studied so much. Yay! I studied a lot and I still don't remember for the Constitution. Um, yeah. Hundred questions, that's tough. Hundred questions is a lot. Um, so where are we?
we from? Anybody here that was not born in the United States? Please, stand up and tell us where you are from. You? Yes, yeah. Yeah. come on, hurry up. Uh, I'm Ecuador. Ecuador. Yeah. Everybody knew? Yeah. Oh, now we know. Hey, now we know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep going. Those of you who raise your hand, stand up and say. I was also born in Ecuador. Ecuador? Yeah. Very nice. Keep going. I was born in Peru. Peru, very nice. I was born in Dominica. In Dominica, nice. Um, I was born in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, very nice. But in national I'm from here. But what? I'm from Yemen. So Yemen. I'm only like the place I was born in Saudi Arabia, I'm not so. Okay. okay. <laughs> very far. We'll touch base on that in a second. Who else? You were born in? I was born in Canada. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we were born, well, we are from Puerto Rico, but you know, born in this part. So born and raised in Puerto Rico. Very nice. Could we safely say 50% of this population was not born here? Yeah. All right, but here's another question that I have, because one thing is where you're born, but another here thing is where's your heart? Right? And yours? Where's your heart? Mexico. <laughs> right? Because I have friends that were born in the United States, but their heart is in where the grandmother raised them in the summer. Where the traditions in your home are lived inside of your home, even if it's New York or whatever state. Because you were saying you were born in Saudi Arabia, but you identify yourself as a Yemeni. Is that how you say in English? Right? Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. So one thing is where you're from, and another thing is where you identify yourself. And both of them form part of this culture because that's how you act. Is it true that our parents, oh let's go to the parents' generations. Whose parents were not from the United States? Whose grandparents were not from the United States? Hey, now we have everybody! I knew that I was going to get to the generation. <laughs> we got a point where nobody's from the United States, right? And is it true that when you're at home, you have specific things that you eat, or specific things that you do? What do you say that you have in your home? For me? Yes, like something that you say like, oh, this is just like a cultural thing or a traditional thing. Food. Definitely. I mean, I'm born and raised in New Jersey, but my parents and my grandparents are from Puerto Rico, so... Believe a hoko is something I'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What about you? Um, aside from the food, the music. Yeah. Yeah. What is the background? Salsa is a really big thing in my house. Oh, okay. It comes from the island. <laughs> from the islands of salsa. Very good. How about you? Uh, my grandparents are from Spain. I was sort of raised by them most of the time in my youth. And I'm a huge football fan, real football. <laughs> yeah. so, so you've been watching. Yeah. Nice. I've been living in New York now for 15 years, so it's sort of like a weird mixture between the three. Puerto Rican and hard in my head, sort of in New York, but yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Exactly. So this is what we have, right? Oh, what? Atlético de Guadalajara. Ah, Atlético. Okay, now we got it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I know. So that is, that is very interesting because, again, you're here, but then your culture says something different, right? And that also reflects into the things that we do, right? Do you know about, about this? Um, you've seen this before, right? Mm -hmm. Shaking, not shaking, bowing, not bowing. What do we do? Well, now the most popular is the fist bump. People don't know what on earth to put the bumper <laughs> shaking. Because of the germs, people are so good. Exactly. <laughs> and the best thing to do in this case is to smile. Yeah. That's the first one. It's the best case. I have found universally that for greeting purposes, uh, the woman guild will give, you the, will give you the key. If you're a man and a woman, for example, and, and, and one of them shake hands and the other one won't, the woman will typically give you the key. I have found that. 
right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh, of course. Yeah. And then you go to the other part of the cultural side of it, right? When I was in Argentina, men and men kiss in both cheeks when they see each other. So, for my, for my US friends that were teaching in Argentina, they were freaked out the first time they got somebody kissing him in the both cheeks. It was like, wait, wait a minute. Right? Or the things we do, right? Or we don't. Have you ever experienced this? Like, oh, do not open an umbrella because of... Yeah. What would happen if you open an umbrella? Yeah, there's a superstition. What do you say about it? Exactly. So for some people it means nothing, right? How about a mirror when you when you drop a mirror on the floor? Do you agree? Of course, seven years. My father, you know, his Japanese world is like, what? What does, what does that have to do with anything? It doesn't mean anything. No. But we all, we all have these superstitions within the culture as well. And it's important to know them, you know, just to be aware. One yes. thing like, uh, here in your place, in, in the couple, the taxi you have to be ticked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in Japan, if you be ticked for a driver, you will be mad at you. It means that you need to pay extra money. What's in that? So it don't break it in Japan. Exactly. Exactly. They feel that uh, they're not doing it with honor. Yeah. Therefore, you're, you know, trespassing that. Definitely. And here everybody's tipping. And then here we tip uh, the restaurants, what, 20%? Mm -hmm. And in Mexico City, we paid uh, 10%. 20%? <laughs> well, you know, like, <laughs> if you have a good service, of course. Yeah. Uh, but in Mexico, it's like 10%. It's a what? It's 15. It's 15. Yeah, it's the average. 15, 20. Yeah. So even that, how interesting to know it, and, and, and how we have all come to get into the same, into the same culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, also the way we count, how about meters or miles? Mm -hmm. Meters! <laughs> I vote for meters for everyone. That's the way it should I, it's be. It's like I vote for meters. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, it's the way it should be. Pounds or kilos? Kilos. Yeah. How many pounds are in a kilo, you remember? No. 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 About two something. Two something. Two something. Two something. Two something. <laughs> it's two point two. It's two point twenty, forty six, twenty two, sixty seven, <laughs> right? Um, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Is the eyes of me? I should say like, oh, in the beginning is like, we're at thirty two. What does it mean? I have no idea. I still need to go out, open the window, see if it's hot or cold, and then come back. It still doesn't say anything, right? And actually, there's only uh, five countries in the world that uses the imperial system. So we still don't understand very well why we're we using Fahrenheit, but anyway. But see, this is very important because even the way we measure, even that. When you go to different companies, all of you are already working, I'm assuming that we have everything, right? Who here is studying but not working? Raise your hand. All right, so we have three. Who here is working already, maybe as an intern? Who has a full-time job? So we have a little bit of everything. You will see in corporations and with clients that this is part of real life if you're dealing with the different multiculturalism. So being aware of it is also another splash in the face. Let's speak the same language, but also let's do the same thing. And the way we communicate, I found that this is really, really cool. These are the patterns of reading disclosure according to Kaplan. English, to the point. I used, I, I used to work in New York Life and we talk about death, right? Because it's life insurance. So they would say, so when you die, <laughs> like, wait a minute, you're opening your big eyes. Exactly like that, people were like, are you out of your mind? Um, and in, in, in the Semitic culture, it's more like, when you die, I'm not saying that you're going to die, but you are going to die. But I'm not saying you're going to die now. Yes. You will die. Um, the Oriental one, you know, like, like the Japanese culture will be like, well, in the life, there's the beginnings and the ends. It would be a very poetic way of saying that one day you might not be here. Um, in the romance, it's more like, uh, I think, like the Spanish that we have, right? So, when you die, because it's quite funny how you're going to die, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to die, but yeah, I mean, I'm talking about that. So, 
everything becomes a joke and that's the thing. And uh, I never understood the Russian very well, I don't know if anybody here can explain this to me. Uh, I'm just assuming that everything's underlined and they don't use the words properly and it's just like chopped in and chopped out. That's the explanation. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, we, ca we call this a contrastive rhetoric hypothesis and that's even the way we communicate. How amazing. Can you see some of your friends here? Mm -hmm. Could you understand them better today, please? <laughs> Give them a break. It is most likely that whatever culture they're coming from is how they've been expressed today, right? So this gives you a better understanding. So now we're getting deep into that. According to the noun, is a manifestation of the achievements, it has behaviors of a group, and it covers all of this, right? Gender, ethnicity, language, age. Some of the synonyms could be civilization, lifestyle, custom, traditions. That is really the culture. Now, if our objective today is to leverage our multiculturalism to succeed, we're going to do this in three steps. Step number one is going to be define success. Right? Achieve what? Success. Yes. What success for you? Identify your traits. So we've gone through very different dimensions of your culture. So I want all of you to start thinking right now, what could those traits be of my culture? Then we'll leverage them. Sounds good? Like the plan? Yeah. All right. So that's what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes. And this is the time where I'm going to be in silence. And now you guys are going to do the work. I need a break. I'm just kidding. All right. So the first part, what we call the foundation, is about what is success for you. And here's what I want all of you to do. I'm going to give you some post-its. You might need just three or four. So if you have extra and somebody else is missing post-its, just Distribute them among all the people. There you go. And then, can you pass this in? Maybe just like cut a few. And the color is just random, so don't start thinking why do I get pink and yellow or whatever. <laughs> can you pass it back, please? And then here. And who else is missing? Sure. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to write on this post is don't write it until you have it clear. What is your definition of success? And the reason why I want to emphasize on this is because if you don't have your own definition of what is success, somebody else will define it for you. If you don't know what success is, somebody else will define it for you. And be aware that in some cultures, and I don't mean this with disrespect, I mean this with love. In some cultures like where we are right now, success could be equivalent of lots of money, lots of fame. I'm not saying that if that's what you think success is, you shouldn't put it there. If that is what it is, that's fine. Because remember, we're all right. What I'm saying is, what other people believe success is should not equate what you believe success is. So what is success for you? Write it down in that post. If you have more space, you can put more stuff. Because you can put dimensions, right? Success is to achieve this, but to have this, but to become this. You can put that type of dimension.
Real good. I remember when I was younger, I really thought success to me was to achieve the highest rank in my corporation. In that moment, that's what I wanted, that's what I saw as success. Now I have a different definition. So it's okay to change your definition later, it's fine. The important thing is not that you stick to it for your life. The important thing is that it's always defined, it's yours, and you stay true to it. That, that's the important thing. Because you can remodel it later. You can share it with your friends and family and say what you think about this. By the way, you don't need approval of anybody. So even if you show it to somebody and somebody starts laughing or say, I don't agree or whatever, it was not for discussion. When you share, it's not for discussion, it's not for opinion. You're sharing it because you're putting a statement. Now for me, success is that I go to sleep every night knowing I help somebody. And that I started at home, obviously. My son, my husband. Did I help them be better today? Did I help them achieve their dreams today? Yes, I sleep successful. That's my new definition. I don't know if in 10 years that will, this will be it, but as long as it's mine, as long as it's true, as long as I can see it and be truthful to it. Anybody would like to share, by the way, the definition of success? Yes, go ahead. Um, mine is being able to spend each day in a job I'm passionate about, and helping others to be successful is my success. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Who else? And again, if you put you know, make it to $10 million, that's also fine. That's also fine, I didn't need to go that way, but what else? Yes? Uh, for me, it's having stabilization at home, work, and at heart. Very nice. What do you have? Um, for me, success means I've been content and happy. So, like, from personal achievement and becoming the best person you could possibly be with, with them achieving your goals. Very good. And you know what, something I'm gonna just pause for a second. Being content and happy, that sounds so easy. <laughs> it's not, it's not. It's, it's, it's a high, it's a very high goal for success. Very nice, and then you were saying. Um, for me, it would be to get to a place where I can get time. Time to spend with my family, with my friends, just to have leisure time and pursue other interests other than just having one passion, it's a job and that's it. Very nice. I see more hands, keep going, yes. Now, for me, success is to like happiness, but not me. Me and the people around me, and others, also health, independence, world, knowledge, family, friends, and the power. Very good. Very comprehensive. <laughs> well, family, independence. Well, the business thing is going to be happy. It's like there's no step to all you without be happy. It's nice, and you're talking about balance, right? Like, you want everything. Very good. Yes. Um, I hope success is being happy with where you are in life while having enough money to live life to the full. Again, another type of balance. Very good. I said being able to sustain and maintain for myself and my mom. Very good. Very comprehensive as well. Anyone else? Real good? Yes. You're like, I don't want to talk. Don't worry, I'll never put you on the spot. Except in the next five minutes when I'm going to close around this and we're going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Except later. Okay. Um, step number one define success, right? This is it. Step number two what strengths do you derive from your culture? I want you to write in another post it. And the reason why I wanted you to put success in one of the posts is because I want you to put this post-it in a place where you can see. Let's say you don't keep paper. Okay, then take a post-it and make it your screenshot, like your, your, your screensaver. It needs to be in a place where you can see it and be reminded. I didn't make this up. People that store in your science say that if you have your mantra, your goal, your everyday phrase 
If you have it in front of you all the time, you see it so much, you repeat it so much, that it goes to your subconscious mind. That's the reason. So whatever method you want, but it needs to be present and constant until it goes to your subconscious mind. Because then you operate almost like flowing through it or to get to it. What your strengths will derive from your culture would be, I'm going to give you an example to make it easier. Um, I come from a culture of perfectionism. You know, Japanese people are really, really, really perfectionist. I'm almost at the range of OCD. <laughs> so I'm taking it back to make it a little bit more manageable, right? Um, another thing would be, because I have this Latin side, I'm very outgoing. So I will feel comfortable dancing salsa in the middle of the party with no problem and just and asking somebody else to dance with me even if I don't know that person. So that's one of the traits of my culture. What can you think of your own culture? Can you please mention two or three I traits it's the same. of your culture? Assertiveness and decisiveness all in the package. Put it there in, in writing yeah. and I'll tell you no why we do this exercise. Very yes, of course. Decisiveness, being assertive. <laughs> Our culture, I think that Puerto Rico are characterized because we are very close to hospitality. When Perfect. We, you know, when we people come and also happy, we we make fun. You know, is a hurricane is coming. We call each other. Where you gonna Where you gonna stay? I have your beers, everything, so we can do like a party in the meantime. You know, because when hurricane is coming, everything is closed, so the parties are on pause. You know, we we make fun of everything. Humor is great. Uh, yes. It's great, and and also uh, I, I told you hospitality and kind, kind. Very good, very good, very nice traits actually. Thank you. Hospitality. <coughs> yes. Yes. Uh, strength from my culture, my parents are from the Dominican Republic. I was born and raised in New York City, but um, so where's your heart? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so at um, home, the strength of my culture, I guess, is like people person. So I, I'm a people person. Like I communicate well with people because, like, when I travel to the Dominican Republic, I see how they spend time with family. Like they have family day, like Sundays at the church. They sit around and they talk and they communicate well within each other within the family. Nice. Neighbors come over. Like everybody knows each other in the town. So it's like a people person. Yeah, that skill that I, I, I have. That's a very, very nice trait. And it's difficult for other people. Other people that are more shy, that are more introvert, might not share that, so that's a very good one to have. Yes? I was going to say, like, like she was talking about Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, like, obviously, of course. But my parents kind of taught me to, to learn how to make friends with anybody. Like, I even talk to strangers sometimes, not creepy ones. But you know, <laughs> I, I like sometimes I make friends with people on the train or or at school. I make a lot of friends, but that's because like my parents usually do that when we go out. They usually make friends with some like yeah, yeah, I think so sociability is yeah. Yeah. sociability. It's a, it's a very nice trait to have. My wife is Polish and she doesn't get it. I know, right? Like but, the northern. Well, she's country. from New York, but her family's Polish, and she doesn't get it, but she loves it because she doesn't have it in her. Yeah. That's the thing, it's, it's a nice like, We're going to a concert and I'm making friends with the neighbors. And <laughs> yeah, the how do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> because you learn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you should, because you saw it. You yeah. were a kid when you were looking at all these traits. But it's a nice one to have. And, and, the, and the northern the country, the colder they are in our perspective. Yeah, that's true. So they might not have this warmth uh, of talking to strangers uh, uh, attitude. Yes. Uh, for me, like, my culture, my religion, these two things. Which one? You have to be the best. And the other is, one, the, the other is the best what you want for yourself. So, this way, you have to be self and also care about others. Like, between different things between culture here, New York State, and my country. One country, I know my, the seven level. Even like, we didn't have, have somebody who called that babysitter. Only I know that if my, my country, if my mother is not there already, I stay in my neighborhood. Uh, How sometimes interesting. When, yeah, sometimes when she travels and she at home, I take the food from seven or eight house. <laughs> they take care of me, they send the kids, stay with me, and 
So it's kind of like you can't survive by yourself. You have to um, work with the other, know the others, and help each other. I yeah. love that, and because that translates into what your concept will be of teamwork, mm -hmm. of responsibility, of group accountability. That changes the whole perspective. I love it. I grew up with a very similar thing there in Mexico. The neighbor was, uh, we call them aunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, like, they were not there. Uh, um, my husband was in Mexico and said, like, I love scouts. You have all these aunts. Are they really your aunts? But it's like, well, not there by blood, but everybody's my aunt because we love them and that's it. And everybody's my cousin. So I just learn tío, tía, uncle and aunt, primo, prima, and everybody, and you will be fine because everybody else will be related in that way. And it's the same, yes. the same type of thing, no? and, and it helps you. Um, uncle and ladies and Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, yes. Um, so my family is half and half. My mom's family is from Trinidad, and then my dad's family is from North and South Carolina. Nice. So I kind of like get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Good. Um, so from my Caribbean family, I learned independence and determination Whoa. because they had to work hard for everything that they have, like the houses that they've owned, um, the land that they've owned in our country. They've had to work very hard to maintain it and keep it. Um, and then from the southern part of my family, I learned hospitality and how to be level-headed, which is very important. Like people always freak out in emergencies and I'm more like, okay, let's think about this before we all start to freak out. And then I'm very hosp like hospitable when it comes to like money. I'm not like frugal when it comes to like people that I love or people I care about. I'm very just like, listen, it'll come back to me if I give it out into the world. So mm -hmm. I'll be your friend. I was just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. You're very generous. Mm -hmm. You're very generous. And the quality of acting cool in a in, in a in a difficult situation, it's so valuable. It's so so valuable. Thank you for sharing. So let's keep moving. Um, the strengths are one, but the other one would be the weaknesses. So what would a weakness be? I want you to write one or two in another post-it, please. Oh. It'll make sense why in another post-it in a minute. Mm -hmm. In another post-it. And I want you to write it down. For example, I'll give you, I'll give you an example of mine. Um, I am I'm, I'm very naive. I grew up with my mother opening the door to everybody and their brother, lending money to everybody and their brother, trusting. So I, I'm, I'm, I trust to the point where sometimes my friends said, like, seriously, you didn't see that coming? <laughs> and so I would say, like, no. Nope. <laughs> but I choose to live this way, by the way. I mean, now that I'm conscious of it, I choose to be this way because I'd rather live in a way of trust and then live the opposite than live here and, and not trust anybody. So I, this is my choice. But you know, it could be it could be a weakness. Uh, sometimes this outgoing thing could also be a weakness, depending on where you are. Yes. Right. <laughs> in my in our culture, I think when I you know I learned that because I compare you know with my ex husband the way they are that in Puerto Rico we. We, if sometimes say something wrong to you, you take it personal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But in you know, in Spanish guys, they can tell you you did that wrong, but they are not talking to you. They are talking about what you did, you know, and, and it's not problem, you know, and that's like a lot of uh, conflict because you take it personal. Okay. You say, they are offending you, and it's not. It's just mention it. But. So that I think that's a weakness we have because okay. that make a lot of conflicts. Especially in Puerto Rico, you see in the politics, we have we are very small, but we have three main uh, parties mm -hmm. that are always fighting and it's crazy, uh, and, and I think that's the problem because mm -hmm. they take things personal, you know, the essential. So mm -hmm. something to work on, right? Did yeah. you write down one of our witness? All right, this particular post-it, I want you to share with the person at your left, and in the case, for example, of Roland and. You can exchange among each other. Okay. Just make sure that you don't have yours. Exchange it with whomever. And in your case, you can exchange it with her if you want to. Well, my level of success, or my definition of success, is having a pen with me at all times because I don't need to have any white ones. Okay, yeah. so you don't have any weaknesses, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I do. Okay, I want you to. <laughs> Thank you. This is the example. Ah, yeah, you can exchange with you. him, exactly. Here's, 
here's the reason why I want to, you to give it to somebody else. Because we tend to take our weakness and then almost like punish us with it and then live with it. What I want the other person that has the other people's weakness. They're like, what? Which which is that? It doesn't matter if it's not, uh, as long as it's not yours, just keep any other weakness. As long as it's not yours. Okay. As long as it's not yours. What if your weakness is a trait that you know is your weakness? Exactly. Not necessarily, I don't think it's that bad, a bad thing. I know that it's a thing that I should be working on, but it's not hindering me from doing anything. Beautiful, thank you, and that's the point of this. Because your weakness is a trait for somebody else. So I want you to look at the, what other people put as weakness and convert it into a strength. Look at the weakness of the other person and convert it into a strength. Write down the strength and then give it back. Look, look at the weakness that somebody else gave you. Convert it into a strength. Write it down on their paper. On their paper, okay. and give it back. You are going to convert the other person' weakness into trait. Okay. So what is the To a strength. Convert the other person' weakness into a strength. Write it down in the same post-it. Give it back. This exercise you can do over and over. This is just a test of it. We can spend 30 minutes on this one, it's really interesting. And you can have dimensions in this one. Because you can make a list, send it to five, four people, they'll bring it back as strength. You will be surprised. So try this, try this little exercise in a bigger scale you will be surprised because what happens to us is we're so into oh my god i'm so bad at this oh i can't do this that you no longer see the possibilities of these traits and they're actually positive you know i was always told oh you mexicans are always changing the plans one day is one thing the other day there's always a plan and they're always changing i will say that's called flexibility that's called flexibility, yes? <laughs> because guess what? We are truly flexible. Oh, it's not green anymore. Okay, what do you want? Purple. Purple it is. Fabulous. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Right? Please give it back to the owner of that witness. The last part to do this is that I want you to write three adjectives that describe you but that somebody else told you you were that. That somebody else told you, oh you are... What is people telling you? Tell me three things, three adjectives that other people have given to you. Okay, so. down. Things that people have told you. Even if you don't believe it, by the way, because the majority of the times when somebody's praising us, we say like, nah, I'm not that. But then you are, because somebody says something. Okay. And I make you put something about you're very good with the camera. Okay. We got what's culture. We've identified the traits. Now we're going to learn how to leverage our multiculturalism to succeed in our careers. And the way to do this is we're going to put them all together. You have a bunch of post-its that simulates a brainstorming activity the same way as if you're in a company, you're having all these post-its in the wall. Have you seen this before? Mm -hmm. it's, the same, it's the same type of activity, but you're doing it with yourself. And you can keep on going, by the way. This is just a taste. Keep on going. Everything that comes in your, in your mind, 
And the question is, who am I? Where do I want to go? Who am I and what do I want? That's the question. You can keep on going. As of right now, we have enough material to put it all together. If you put it all together, you will have the foundation to build your mission. And your mission will be the jump start for your next step. And you'll see this when you talk about branding with Roland. If I say that success was to make the world a better place, and that my strength was to be reliable, empowering, and positive, my unique weakness was in the naive imperfections, and the adjective that people have told me is that I'm creative, that I'm resourceful, that I'm persistent. If I put it together, my foundation will be something similar to... Hello everybody, my name is Minwa Yoshida. And I help others shine, that's what I want. With their own light, not with mine. By creatively discovering their potential, and empowering them to be better every day through positive reinforcement. Did you see how it goes together? To finish today's session, I want all of you to get to the point where you're going to write your statement. That is going to help you build a platform for your mission, for your brand, but also what you put on LinkedIn are you using your words on your LinkedIn? Is your resume, is your resume reflecting those words? No? Go back to everybody. I don't care if you're working, I don't care if you have a job. Because we always have to have a resume up to date that day. But are your traits reflecting? Is your culture reflected? Are your strengths reflected? So please, to finish today's session, Take a piece of paper, or the iPad, or your phone, or your computer, or wherever it is that you take notes, and put it all together. This one we're going to read out loud, and you really just have two minutes. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have just two minutes, because I want to finish on time. So you have one minute to say it, and then one minute to say it out loud. To write it and say it. Not all of the words need to be there, by the way. Because if not, it's like too much. It's going to sound like a very bad cliche. No? It's not a treaty, it's just a sentence. <laughs> You're like volume two. <laughs> Read them out loud and we're done. Good? Yes. 
Hurry up. I know, I'm gonna be Este, my mission, be the best every day to help others with kindness and positive attitude. Wonderful. And keep working on it so that you have a comprehensive one where you can include all of your traits that are so great. Okay. Hurry up. I want to use my personal strengths to provide and afford enough time for my family to enjoy life without struggle. Thank you. To be able to spend each day empowering others to be successful, keeping my focus strong, using my human, humor and motherly approach to fend off cynicism and infuse optimism in others. Very nice. I think I you used a lot of them. Exactly. Yeah. I, saw, I, I saw that. that. Did you like it? No, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice treat. Uh, ready. Uh, to have the knowledge that I've and uh, working to me. Myself heavy and other. Very good. Yeah, and I also build my weakness in my culture. I feel like close mind, so I be like open mind and connect with others. With an open mind and connect with others. Yeah. Perfect. Um, to use my open mindedness to give back to my community. A little bit louder? Oh, to use my open mindedness to give back to my community. Very good. So, uh, Keep working on most more adjectives yeah. that I'm sure you have there. Yes. I can say it. Help others find their worth, confidence, and um, to be outstanding and to be fearless in life. If you take, to take action. To be fearless and take action. Very, very powerful. Very good. Come on. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Just oh. take it. Just how it is. My foundation for my mission is to not fail in life and to never give up and to always have strength in my business. Wow! That's great. That's huge. What was the last sentence? To always find strength in my weaknesses. Oh. Wow. Nice. I'm truly happy when others can count on me because I'm reliable as I like to help others and be my full potential while helping people for my people skills. Very nice, exactly. And you've incorporated what you said your trade was with uh, nice. with your mission, with what you're going to do. Very nice. Uh, to utilize my skills and knowledge to help people achieve their own passionate successes in a non-judgmental and considerate way. Very nice. Consideration, yes. To create a daily path for myself through my strength and boldness. And the last word, boldness. Wow, being bold. Yes, woman. Through independence and determination, I will sustain and maintain for myself and loved ones with the utmost hospitality. Very nice. You see how she incorporated also that mm -hmm. part. You ready? Yeah. Uh, to encourage others to follow their creative passions and aspirations and to always be optimistic through all trials and challenges. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love it. Over there you went. I'm taking notes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over here. Yes. Um, helping others through their through their struggles and building my own career while being ha being happy in life with building relationships and being friendly. Very good relationships, happiness, friendliness. Yes, uh, over there in the back. Um, try making decisions whilst looking at all aspects of an issue at hand, hoping to use, utilize it towards goal. And utilize that oh, towards um, a career goal. To a greater goal. Very good. Very good. No. Yes, to work in creating more people-friendly cities by making it easier for communities to learn about available resources and be passionate to take action towards equality. Very, very good. Okay, what you have accomplished today is what almost 5% of the population accomplishes yet, ladies and gentlemen. You will be surprised how many people out there have no idea who they are and what they want. Congratulations for accomplishing today the first step of knowing yourself, tracing a clear path so that you know where you're going. Because that's actually the first step to being successful. Keep going with this exercise so that you evolve this definition and share it with your friends, with your family. Put it on Facebook, put it on LinkedIn. Your resume should say it. Your 30 second speech should say this so that it's all aligned and you show up authentic. That's the first step of success. I want to thank everybody for being here today. I really enjoyed this time and I can't believe the time just yeah. passed. I hope you find this very useful.
Yeah. And I hope yeah. to see you again. Thank you, Minue, for this excellent uh, presentation that all of us uh, learned a lot. And now the coffee is ready. So uh, we're going to do coffee and then come back here uh, to decide what we're going to do because since the group is leader, we are trying to, we're going to discuss with the other speakers if we can do something that you can benefit for the whole uh, three topics. So let's see what we can do. But uh, first of all, you have 15 minutes or 10 minutes because we are not that many uh, to have coffee and you can bring the coffee here, whatever. Okay.